Hi, Dolly friends, Christians again. Welcome back to our video. This is another request of saying for Zane. And the name of this video is In Our House Vomit Gore Masterpiece Slaughter Vomit Dolls. I've never heard of these kind of movies before, so I don't know what I'm getting myself into, but let's find out, baby. The John Joe Lions reviews is sponsored by City Ruins Apparel. Go check them out on Instagram at City Ruins Apparel and visit so their store at get that drip. He's dead, honey, because mommy killed him. Goddamn force of nature. Candyman. They're coming to get you, Barbara. See, Jason was my son, and today is his birthday. Sir, don't you blame the movies. Movies don't make cycles. Movies make cycles. Four, three, eight. John Joey, I can't pronounce that. Sorry. Every review is getting worse and worse, darker and darker. My name's John Joe Lyons, and today I'm here to present to you my review of 2006's Slaughter Bomber Dolls. Never heard of that movie. What the hell is that? I'm starting to question this whole path I'm on at the moment. A path lined with the bloody and vomit covered corpses of evil and innocent alike. A path that I chose to take in an effort to confront, understand, and analyze the genre that I love with every fiber of my being. To seek out and witness the absolute worst of the worst. The path that has finally led me to this film. Written and directed by Lucifer Batman. There's four of these movies? Name, Slaughter Vomit Doll stars Amira LeVay and Pam McCartney, among many others. We can't get a sequel to Trick or Tree or Dread or When a Stranger Calls or. Um. I sequel them to um who sequel to um pumpkin I sequel to pumpkin there and I was like okay we get a sequel to these movies. I'm just gonna start now with the IMDb synopsis. The gruesome tapestry of psychological manifestations of a 19-year-old bulimic runaway stripper turned prostitute as she descends into a hellish pit of satanic that sounds nightmares stupid. and hallucinations. That now sounds that so stupid. I know how to begin with this one? I'm a little bit lost for words. I'll tell you this. I was genuinely anxious about watching this movie. I was literally trembling as it started up. No exaggeration. I hate throwing up, seeing people throw up, or hearing people throw up. I know no one's a massive fan of vomiting, but for me it's a real issue. So, John Joe, why the f*** would you sit down and watch a movie called People were fans for that shit. I hate myself, and unfortunately this movie has a reputation of being almost unwatchable, which means it belongs right here, in my mind, forevermore. I don't really know what else to say. Let's just crack on, shall we? The film begins with shots of a young girl, presumably our lead Angela. That camera quality is so fucking bad. Into what the? Scenes of violence, the adult Angela introducing herself, her occupation as a cool girl, and her sleep. We also see Angela laying down, making a the declaration fuck am I watching? of love and <laughs> sake. We then cut to a shot of a naked and intoxicated Angela sitting on the toilet, falling on the floor, and then asking the cameraman for help. Almost as if she's asking us for help. And then to address the Angela That's exiting out. the bathroom and then stripping. <laughs> This movie look this movie looks fucking terrible already. The camera quality is they're so fucking bad. Scenes of her eyes being torn out are then cut with shots of both young and present. I believe this character to be a representation of Angela, or at least her perception of herself prior to her believing her. The terror the eyes being going. the removal of the perception of herself as that person. Pig then vomits onto a glass table when we see the eyes in the pool of vomit. <laughs> I can hardly tell what's going on. Camera quality is so fucking bad. Cut to Angela vomiting and then offering her services before stripping off. Cut to another woman being strangled and tortured, which again is intercut with scenes of Angela sleeping. The tied up woman then has her face cut off, removing the mask and showing the real her. Showing what's underneath, which is important. Someone camera? There's much more. There's much we spend the next section of the film cutting around between Angela vomiting, pole dancing, and stripping, showing Angela's life before turning to sex. And there's four of these motherfuckers? Oh my god. We then cut to a woman explaining to camera how she became bulimic. Cut to the same woman having her arm cut off. The now, fuck is happening? There's a moment where the person torturing her places a guitar in front of her. While it doesn't really figure into my analysis, this did make me crack up laughing. 
as dark as it is, I kind of feel like this is a moment of levity, or at least the closest thing in this film to visual humour. By this point, you've been so bombarded with madness that you can't help but laugh. Or at least I couldn't anyway. It's we not funny, it's fucking Arthur stupid. He uses it to make himself funny. Oh, the man then vomits into a pint glass, drinks it, vomits, drinks it, rinse and repeat, and this was Why? the only moment before I literally had to look away. So I don't drink it. What is the purpose of this of these fucking f Is it that bad? It's by far the worst moment in the entire film. We then see Angela stripping, dancing, then cut to a woman having a throat. I hope he was, she wasn't underage. Dance. Don't know if that was Angela or the actress that played Angela, or maybe a visual representation of Angela killing off that part of her life. God, this movie looks like something I would literally puke myself because of the fucking camera shaking. Then having his brain removed, which another man eats and then throws up into the hollowed out head. Perhaps this could be rid of her from purging her intelligence, or being rid of the mind that could have taken her far, were it not for the choices she made or was forced to make. Finally, we flash through a montage of Angela in all the stages that we've seen before, deteriorating and falling apart until we finally settle on a morose looking Angela with rope tied around her neck. She gets into a bath and drowns as we hear a siren and then cut to the young Angela. The child turns her back on us, and the film ends. I know, right? This movie was like a nightmare, ripped out of somebody's mind and burned to a DVD. Probably made that movie is sick in the head, for sure. Designed to cause discomfort to the viewer. The aggressive editing, the erratic sound design, the bursts of sudden gore, the shockingly beautiful performance from Amira LeVay. This isn't just a movie filled with screaming and repulsive violence. This is a film that tries yes, to turn the is. trauma of a lead character into a physical form. A visual nightmare that takes Angela and strips her down persona by persona. Each death representing another face that Angela has worn throughout her years. Each identity dying as she strips herself down over and over again, layer by layer. This isn't just about people vomiting. She is the girl having her eyes ripped out. The girl being choked, the man filming, the cannibal, the bulimic. This is a story about a human being purging themselves of all the pain and misery that they've been subjected to, ripping off and discarding the false pretenses and finally washing away her own sins as she lets go. This isn't just a film, this is Angela's suicide note. That's my read anyway. As you can see, I had a real tough time watching this movie and honestly, when it finished, I wasn't a fan. But after having a couple of hours... To I'm not a fan, I haven't watched it. say that, I think I love this movie. My yeah. power team, man. I fucking. I, fucking I might waste my time with this piece of shit movie. Did, because this is just the first entry in a series of films about Angela's descent into hell, culminating in the Angela chapters released in 2020. I hear things only get worse from here. I'll be reviewing every single one of these films over the next couple of months. I got a question to watch the second one too, so that's coming next. Three of them in a row. Like, you need time to reflect. But yeah, I recommend it. It's not for everyone. It might not be for anyone. But I loved it. So do with that information what you will. I know that I listed the scenes that are in the film just because I wanted to give you a sort of idea of what you'd be going into, but the experience of actually watching it, like I said, the editing, the sound design, all of those things, like, it, it needs to be seen, it needs to be experienced. Just f***ing watch it, basically. So that was my review of Slaughter Vomit Dogs. Have you seen it? If you have, let me know in the comments below what your read on the film is. I imagine that there's loads of people out there that have different interpretations of the film, and I'd love to hear all of your thoughts. But in the meantime, as always, like, share, subscribe. My name is John Joe Lyons. Stay frosty. Yeah, it doesn't seem like my kind of movie, in my opinion. It looks like a piece of shit. The camera quality sucks. You can barely see what's going on in the fucking movie, so... It might not be for anyone. It's definitely not for me. I got requested to watch the review of the second one too. So that's coming next. Stay tuned for that I guess. If you want to watch it. And yeah. With that said. Thanks for watching. Take care. Peace out. See you on the next video. So it's a pleasure. Bye bye.